What are you trying to Life. Welcome to Train for Life, a podcast brought to you by ISI Elite Training. I'm Adam Rice, founder and CEO, and we'll be hosting this alongside Amanda Hall, our COO. Tune in weekly as we explore topics on personal and professional development to help you level up in all aspects of your life. We call this Training for Life. All right, in today's episode, we're going to be talking about the characteristics of for specifically of highly successful people. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Um, so I want to kind of preface this with success. Um, a lot of people I think equate success with just money and success looks very different for everyone. So Amanda, how would you define highly successful people? Um, define highly successful people. You know, for me, successful is I agree. It's different for everybody. It really has nothing to do with money. Um, I think if the lifestyle that you envision requires money, it had that's for a sure. part of it. But I really feel like success is um, living the life that you envision and the life that you want. Um, which I honestly think a lot of people don't. Yep. If we're really honest with ourselves, or if we think through the lens of just even what I hear from people throughout their lives. Or if you talk to people who are the best part, and we, you talked about this, is like uh, getting around someone in their 80s. Yeah. And talking to them about, you know, what they what they would do differently, yep. if anything. Um, and you really kind of hear this. And that's when I think about a, someone being successful. And for me personally, I think if I get to the to the end of this life and I can say that I – did the things that I always wanted to do and that I lived the life that I truly wanted to live. Um, not that it's always perfect. That to me is success. It yeah. really doesn't have anything to do with money. And the only part money is it could be a vehicle to make that vision come to fruition. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I think, yeah. well, I don't know. What about you? I don't know. I mean, I think I don't want to discredit it because money, like for sure it's a tool, right? And it's, that's exactly what it is. It's a vehicle. So it's going to buy you or gain you more experience. It's going to allow you to give more, which I think is all fundamental to success in its entirety. Also Mm. when people reach their capacity of potential, they're typically delivering more value to the marketplace, which they're going to then get paid more. So I think it, it does equate to money. I just don't want anybody to think like, Oh, well, I'm not successful because I'm not a millionaire, and I don't think that that qualifies anyone. Well, think about how many people are millionaires or above and beyond, and they're unhappy. Yep, miserable. Miserable, yep. and you see it. I mean, yeah, and you hear that all the time. And then there's plenty of people who are, and they're very happy. And yep. I love what you said about they're giving back or providing more value, or you know, however they got there, they're teaching the next you know generation to do the same thing yeah. um, that give back. But yeah, so it's very clear, like. There's plenty of people with a lot of money who aren't very happy at all. Agree. So let's talk Let's talk about actually, we, we kind of put our heads together and we say, what are some common themes of people? Um, to give a little bit of context, really over the past six months, we've had a lot of opportunity to be around some, what I would call highly successful people. We've got to be around Ed Milette. We've got to be around John Gordon. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got to be around, just recently we went to Montana and spent some time with the uh, the CEO of mind body who was one of the original investors in pinterest and wish and squarespace um and one thing that i notice is they all have common themes and uh, you know the old saying of success leaves clues i think is so so relevant so whether you're a coach and you're trying to be a better coach or whether you're in sales and you're trying to be a better sale like there's always fundamental things that I think are going to be common towards success or whether you're a creative and you want to be a better creative or whatever it is but what would you like if we just dive into like what would the first characteristic be for you and kind of go a little bit deeper into uh, what that characteristic might look like? So it's, so our practices, we both wrote down what we thought we didn't tell each other. Yep. And our first one was the same, yep. uh, which was curiosity. So, uh, you know, I think people who are successful, they have this innate curiosity to um, learn and understand and dig underneath For one, I think that's how a lot of them find opportunity because they are curious. Um, So that typically isn't leading with, it's funny because it's not leading with um, 
itself. Like everyone look at me. I think sometimes there's this illusion of successful people. And maybe this is because of Instagram and social media today. It's like you have to be an influencer. People have to like you. The most successful people often aren't seen publicly right. bef- prior to being successful in the, in the, in the uh, reality of, I would say, money or fame or success building businesses, right? That all started with a level of curiosity, doing the work, asking people questions, getting in circles where um, – and sometimes curiosity is even getting around people smarter than you and then asking them how they did it, especially if you're trying to achieve something and, and take it to the next level. So to me, curiosity is really um, asking really great questions. Uh, and I, like I said, putting yourself in rooms where other people um, can either teach you or you can learn from them. I don't know. What do you think from curiosity? You're, I know you're big about yeah. asking questions and – yeah, I think it, we talked a little bit about this. Like, I think curiosity is like the root of it. Honestly, is it may be selfish um, because, like, I would say that is one of my strengths. Is I'm I'm super curious, but if I ask myself why, I'm really curious. It's exactly what you said. It's trying to find opportunities, trying to find common ground so that I can build rapport and right. the, then and therefore influence that individual in a good moral way, right. right, ethically, but saying, like, I mean, that's, I think one of the, the main contributors to success is your ability to influence other people, to to share your vision, to get them excited about something, to, to really get them bought into your why, and that all boils down to influence, and so if you can ask people, everyone loves themselves, loves being asked about themselves, loves talking about themselves, so if you can lead with curiosity in that realm, I think that that's one of the easiest easiest ways is just ask more questions about people right it's funny because i'll i'll ask even some people on our team i said you know if they're in sales or whatever it is i said i'll ask them certain questions around their candidates and i say hey like what's their wife's name or what does their wife do something simple right and if they can't answer that then they're they're not going deep enough Mm. right because they're just not building so they're leaving opportunity on the table. They're not building enough rapport, in my in my opinion. There, um, that's good. So think about um, when you when you ask if you're trying to get someone from the influence standpoint. You go into a room and you ask them about them. You may they may not know one thing about you, but they will say, "Wow, you know, Adam was Adam Rice. He's awesome." And you're like, oh, they don't. They didn't ask me one question. I didn't say right. one thing about myself. All you did was learn about, you know, who they were, asking them questions about, you know, their life. But that influences them enough, and they'll actually remember you. Yeah. M- more so than if you were to talk about, you know, who you are. Yeah. Which is oft- often the tendency. Yeah, I think also like I want to make this relevant for even like um, friend building friendships. You know, mm. say you're a stay-at-home mom. Like, how do you connect with other stay-at-home moms, right? It's it's the same exact way. You ask, you're curious about them. You're curious about their life. And oftentimes that builds rapport and leads to further connection. So I just think curiosity is, is one of those things that, you know, again, we talk about success and, and so much. 99% of success is you're in your control. It's just being aware, and, uh, aware to it and being intentional. And I would add to, and not to stay on curiosity the whole time, but one interview question I love to ask is if I were to ask you to do something that you didn't know how to do, how would you go about figuring it out? And I'm normally looking to see if they'll say Google it. Yep. <laughs> but in the land we live in today, if you can't be curious about how to figure out a new skill or do something or who out there is already doing it to find the person to ask, yep. that is that to me is ins- insanity. You yep. know, like there, it is at your fingertips. So when someone, um, I'm always looking to say like leverage the tools you have in front of you, but part of that in curiosity too is doing a little bit of research, you know, I mean, and there's really not anybody today, maybe they wouldn't, maybe you're not going to get a call or meeting with them, but you can reach anybody you want through social or LinkedIn and you never know until you ask kind of mentality. So if it's, if it's a person that you're trying to reach, you can do that. If it's something you're trying to learn a skill, a business, um, you know, how to do something for, uh, you know, a business you're starting, like Google it. Uh, That's curiosity. Curiosity is saying, oh, I just don't know how to, I don't know how to do it, 
but I'll figure it out. Yep. You know, I'll find a way to do it. So I, I, that's just one other arm of curiosity that I see so many, you know, maybe, maybe you aren't the most social person, yep. but you want to learn something new um, or get in a room of people that you wouldn't naturally put yourself in. Find the group on Facebook, look them up, go to the next meeting, you know, sit in the back. Maybe you don't say anything the first couple of times. I don't know. But I there's think- just so much opportunity there too for curiosity if your skill set isn't necessarily to to be very conversational around a table, you know, asking questions. Yeah, I mean, everything you just said leads into our next characteristic, which is drive or someone yes. who's driven, right? So if we want to stack this, curiosity like is the, the fundamental, and then drive is, is that thing that is actually like a mentality, right? We talk about I know we're both big fans of Kobe Bryant and, you know, just a, a, a mentality of I'll fi- I may not know, but I'm going to figure it out. Right. And we live in a day and age right now where it's like you can figure anything out. And, you know, I think from that standpoint, how would you outside of, you know, I'm going to figure it out. How would you quantify just from success with people you've been around? Like, how would you say drive inherently increases their success? And can you be successful without drive? Hmm. I mean, I would, for one, the second question to me, I would say no, unless you win the lottery. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe there's like a luck piece in that. I don't know. Um, I think drive to me is a mentality. Um, I think you have, you also have to have the ability then to say no to things that would steer you away from what you're driven towards and then say yes to the things that are going to put you that much closer. I think that mentality is, um, I don't know that everybody has, if I'm honest, I don't know that everybody has the capacity to have that level of drive and mentality. I agree. Um, I think some people do. I don't know if it's, do I think it's something you can, I don't even know. I kind of struggle. Like I think some people are very driven and they, they can cut through everything and move forward they're that driven towards what they want to achieve. Yep. And then I, I think if you've ever read the book Relentless by Tim Grover, Grover, I'm a huge fan of it. And he breaks it down, talks about, you know, he trained Kobe and that challenger mentality. Um, you're willing to do whatever it takes. Um, that level of drive, I think, for someone who is successful, I think it has to be there. I don't think you can be successful without it. Yeah, without I really drive. Don't. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think, too, Uh the other question I would have for you is I think there's a lot of people out there who want success, but maybe they're not driven. So is is drive something that you feel is inherently instilled into your DNA, or is it something that you think can be developed? Is it something that can be influenced? What does that look like? I don't know. I I mean... it's hard for me to say that anybody can't develop something because I, I feel that's a limiting belief. Meaning you're saying, is it a confidence I think thing? for some people it's instilled. What yeah. do you, I don't know. What, what do you I think? Don't know. I mean, I think for some people it is, but I, if I think of my drive, I do think it came from a level of my childhood. You've always been driven though. You talk about that. Like I'm even a as a child, child, right? For sure. Me yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Maybe, maybe, and maybe some people are driven and they just don't ever execute on that drive. Like they, they get to a point and then fear sets in, right? So they step back. I don't know. I mean, I have a hard time saying, I mean, do you feel like it can be developed? I have a time saying it can't because that to me feels. Well, I think let's talk about the third characteristic because I think it, it goes hand in hand with that and that's vision. So I think drive and vision if you any highly successful people ha, can arc, articulate a very clear vision right of what they everything down to how they want to live what success means to them like for me i can i can define that it's it's do what i want with who i want when i want and that's success to me it has nothing around a dollar amount right um that's also freedom to me so i think they're very clear around their personal values i think they're very clear around their vision of what they want not to accomplish, but to feel, right? And if, where I see a lot of people that, because I I know both as leaders, 
we talk, we've talked about it several times. One of the most frustrating things is seeing someone with potential and them not having the drive to actually bring it to fruition. It's, it's so frustrating um, because you sometimes want it, you, what you feel as you a leader. You want it more for them yeah. <laughs> than they want it. Yeah, and so I, I'm sure a lot of parents feel like that with their kids too, right? Um, mine are too young to, to know what the, the result of that's going to be. But um, if we talk about vision, what ultimately, how does that play into um, success in, in your eyes outside of what I said? Yeah, I mean, I, I think if, you, if you're driven, but you don't know what you're driven towards, you know, uh, that, and if you're curious, but you don't, I mean, I think you can have curiosity in all those areas of your life. Um, but I, I think you have, ultimately there's a vision for yourself that to be successful, that vision to me is like what you're looking at. You're, you're saying, these are the things I want to do in my life. If that's what defines success, then these are that drive is how do I get there? The drive to me is what keeps you um, moving when it's hard. Um, it's also what realigns you when you get off path, you know? So, I mean, to me, that drive means even today. So that drive means coming in the office an hour earlier to work on some other things that, you know, are achieving that vision for yep. me. You know, it means a non-negotiable that I'm going to work out you know, five to six days a week. That's a non-negotiable for me. Um, so to me, drive is is those things that, you know, being a leader to me, you have to have drive. You have to be able to be available for your team, you know, even when you're out on vacation. I mean, there's so many areas, but I feel like that drive, that decision to say, you know, I'll do the extra work to get where I want to be, whether that's showing up and working out or working on a project at night and pulling your laptop out, yep. you know, versus diving in and spending your time. You can't spend all your time on Netflix if you want to be a millionaire. That's never yep. going to equate, right? So Agreed. you have to have a level of drive for that vis that vision. That vision has to be there so that your drive can be there and and, and anchored in the right, uh, in an avenue to me that's going to help you be successful, whatever that success looks like for you. Yeah, I think a way to simplify vision is focus, right? So it allows True. you... If you've ever seen, I talk about this all the time. I said, you guys, I talk about this with our franchise partners is you guys could be working your ass off and sprinting so hard. But if your vision is in New York City, but you're sprinting towards L.A., you're actually working really, really hard and your drive is there. So good. Right. Yeah. But you're actually getting further away from where you ultimately want to be. So it's like this, the dialed in focus. Um so that, that kind of parlays us as we wrap this up into the fourth characteristic. And this is just a common theme that I've seen in, man, in the people we've been around lately, um, especially very, very high achievers who are leading big organizations, and that's humility. Um, how do you think humility plays into um, being highly successful? Is it a parlay to curiosity? Because you, you're essentially saying, like, I don't know everything. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I honestly, I, I feel like I, I don't 100 percent know. I just know that's what we see when when we get around. I think there's a level of influence that you have to be successful and you do not have that level of influence or the same level if you lead through ego versus humility. Mm -hmm. Meaning, uh, you know, when you're in a room of people, if you there has to be some likability for them yeah. for you to influence. Um, and. So I think in that realm for you to get around a table or, or even in your life in general for, to be more approachable for um, others to listen to you, I think humility leading with that is just it gives you a level of influence. So that's why I, I feel it's there. And, if, and you know, I, it's curious. You, we met Ed Milet, right? Yep. And we were in this um, that lunch room yep. and he was ta everybody was, you know, around him to talk to him and he didn't get to speak to us. Yep. And when we then met him and we did a picture, he first thing he said to me was, I noticed you in that room and I was trying to get over to talk to you yep. and we didn't get a chance to talk. Yep. And it was very, it was so nice. It was, um, you know, we kind of, we had a little bit of a conversation around his book that was being released, but it was very um, personable, relaxed. I mean, not that I knew, not that I thought it wouldn't be, but right. I was surprised. 
And the fact that he's in a room and he's noticing other people, it's not about himself, um, I think spoke a lot to that level of humility. Um, what do you think? Yeah, no, I agree with you 100%. I think um, for me personally, like leading with humility actually relieves a lot of pressure. Um, I think leading with ego, you have to always um, have this level of um, maybe performance or perception is probably a better word. And just being humble and knowing like, I don't know everything and let me learn from you. It, it like relieves so much pressure. So I just think it's an easier way to, to live life. But yeah, it is, it is a hundred percent a common theme we've seen across the board. So I think too, if you find yourself in, um, sometimes people, the, they are humble at the core, but they feel they need to show up with an ego for people to think better of them. Um, maybe because they're intimidated. So I think as you're stepping into places with, that are uncomfortable. Um, someone said this to me once and it stuck with me. Um, they sat around a table with all these executives and they were really nervous. And so when you go, you know, this has to be executives. It could be in any room that you're, you're nervous going into. It's uncomfortable. And he said, I just sat there and listened. And then I realized no one knew any more than me. Everybody was human. You know, so if you find yourself in places where you feel like you lead with ego because you need to compensate, mm -hmm. um, I would just say one tip is to step back and realize you're stepping into a room and no one, oftentimes they don't really know more than you, maybe in one area, but you may know more than them in another area. So everybody's just trying to get better and, and do that for themselves and through a common goal. So if you can step into those rooms with that mindset um, from a humility standpoint, take the fear off so that your ego doesn't take over. Um, it allows you to really gain more influence, uh, be seen in a different light at the table you're sitting at. And it stuck with me because I used to be very fearful of taking steps into places or oftentimes coming in and feeling like I needed to own the room per se mm -hmm. when you really don't. That makes you know? yeah, yeah, a ton of sense. It just actually popped in my head. Like, you know how I have ADD. It's like every if we look back to our childhood, so every child has these characteristics and every child has the characteristics of curiosity, right? How many questions? I mean, my kids annoy the yeah. piss out of me <laughs> asking me all these questions. They have humility because they don't have ego yet. So they haven't been influenced enough. And I'm talking kids in the five to seven year old range, right? Like obviously they start to eight, nine, 10, build their own personality, be influenced by outside factors. They're driven. Right. They don't like to take no for an answer. Right. And then they also want what they want. Yeah. They know what they want and they know what it looks like. They have this vision inside. So it's like is a is a takeaway and they play like that's they another thing we didn't talk about. They have fun. So is something I don't know. It's like maybe a takeaway from this is like, can you tap back into that childhood when you were five to seven? And I think if we talk about is drive innately there? I would maybe challenge what we talked about and said, mm. does that, does drive get taken away from the level of influence? Like, do we create these belief systems around the people, how we were raised, the experiences of our life? Because if you think about it, every kid is driven at that five year old, six year old, seven year old. Very true. There is a point that that completely shifts and changes where some kids become non-driven, other kids go based on. Based off the factors or their influence as yeah. a. Yeah. I just thought about it as super yeah. interesting, but. I don't know. So you want to wrap us up? I know this is uh this was a really cool episode. Yeah. So, you know, I'll give one takeaway uh, when you leave, uh, when you're finishing wrapping up listening to this voice memo, it note it on your phone, write it down, whatever your preference is, but just really around the four characteristics, uh, write down what are the areas? Is this a characteristic that you have? or maybe you haven't tapped into and how would you want to leverage that to be successful for you know whatever that vision is for you so curiosity we talked about that we talked about drive we talked about having a clear vision you know what is that vision um, and then humility um, do you bring it do you struggle with it how do you get better at it um, but take those away take some time make some notes to yourself um, and listen get after it and we'll see you on the turf